Welcome back to Yahoo Finance on the Move. We're watching market sell off. A lot of this is because of the new reports of coronavirus cases surging, Texas rolling back its reopening, and then we got the run rates for new cases out of Arizona well above their seven-day average. So as we pay attention to that, one of the things that researchers are able to do is to draw upon free data that would have taken years to aggregate in the past and now take roughly seconds. One of the organizations behind making that possible is C3.ai, and the founder and CEO, Tom Siebel, is joining us now to help us how their partnership in the Digital Transformation Institute, along with Microsoft, is helping all of us with this kind of research. Welcome to the program, Tom. Good morning. So what is this, in essence, really about? Is it researchers really can go into the cloud and get data for free that would have taken years to compile in years past? Yes. So what we have done at C3.ai, <clears throat> we spent the last decade building this uh, software engine that's used for industrial and commercial scale uh, AI applications. And one of the requirements of those applications is to aggregate very large data sets, uh, disparate data sets into the uniform, uh, unified federated image. So as this crisis unfolded in a, say, February, March, April timeframe, uh, many organizations around the world began to publish a very large data sets, MITRE Corporation, Johns Hopkins, World Health Organization, CDC, et cetera, about the course of disease, course of the disease in China, in, um, in, in India, in Korea, uh, comorbidity, okay, the shape of the curve, um, uh, mortality rates, infection rates, what have you. And uh, what we have done is we have taken the union of all those data sets and aggregated those data into a unified federated image. Uh, so this is the largest corpus of data about um, COVID that's available on the planet to our knowledge. And weather data, climate data, census data, uh, uh, course of disease, comorbidity, et cetera. And uh, we have published that image um, as a free utility uh, to researchers around the world to be able to uh, understand the course of the disease uh, and uh, hopefully um, come up with uh, well-informed um, data-driven models that will result in better informed policy decisions. Hi, Tom, it's Julie. So as I understand it, you all aggregate and then researchers around the globe can then analyze um, do you know what, if any, has actually come out of that analysis thus far? Well, it's been, uh, this has been going on now. I think we initially published this about six weeks ago, and we updated every two weeks. And so there are thousands of uh, or, uh, people who are accessing it every day. We have not seen the results yet, but I expect to see results. And these are, you know, some of the foremost research institutions on the planet, including pharmaceutical companies, technology companies, uh, research institutions like MIT, Berkeley, what have you, and uh, the you know it is you know unquestionable that very soon we will see um, you know uh, solid data uh, that will inform I think better policy decisions. I mean we're in, in the midst of you know the largest social experiment right now at a global scale since maybe the Bolshevik Revolution. And, uh, you know, that was informed by not very well grounded economic theory. And these decisions that we're making are informed by virtually no data at all. These are, I think, primarily political decisions where people are whipsawing back and forth and the, the economic, social and, uh, and personal costs are pretty substantial. So I think it's incumbent upon all of us to uh, study the data, understand the data and make well informed policy decisions. Well, just to, to Jared Blaker here, by the way, uh, just to follow up on that, how long do you think it's going to take to acquire enough data to actually make informed decisions rather than simply political ones? And then the second part, uh, I know your institute originally focused on anonymizing data. Is privacy part of your concern as well? The, okay, the Digital Transformation Institute is a coalition of a number of major research institutions around the world, uh, Stanford, Berkeley, Illinois, Carnegie Mellon, MIT, Princeton, what have you, that is doing uh, advanced research using the C3 AI data lake uh, on development of AI techniques 
uh, the initial call for papers is development of AI techniques to mitigate the spread of pandemic, including the COVID, understanding the course of disease, understanding the efficacy of various interventions, uh, infection rates, mortality rates, what have you. Um, the, um, as they do, the, the Institute will be doing additional calls for papers every six months. I think they've just funded about you know, $6 million worth of work um, uh, last week, but definitely, ethics and privacy are on the agenda as you know critically important issues as it relates to digital transformation so you can be i'm i'm, I'm confident uh they will be uh, sponsoring extensive research in those areas tom i have a question just about the broader software space since you've worked for so long in that arena and i'm wondering when you take a look at some of the publicly traded companies out there, given the run up that these stocks have had recently, which of them do you feel are providing services that are going to be the biggest value add in a post COVID economy? Well, I think that in a post COVID economy, we're seeing a you know, massive rush to digital transformation as companies reinvent themselves. I mean, you mentioned Royal Dutch Shell earlier. They are in the midst of reinventing themselves writ large. And this is a company, you know, we look at the oil and gas industry, you know, very few companies can make money at less than $45 a barrel, maybe only one Saudi Aramco. And so these companies like Royal Dutch Shell are forced to either reinvent themselves or slowly go out of business. And they are reinventing themselves writ large. So, you know, any any technologies that help fuel this drive towards digital transformation, I think, are, you know, adding enormous value. And that would certainly include Microsoft. I mean, it, they're way out in front, I think. Um, uh, um, people, the, the cloud providers like Azure, uh, AI providers, um, uh, analytics providers, uh, people who have technologies like this technology here that enables us to collaborate virtually. I think all of those are uh, kind of big winners in this new economy. C3.ai founder and CEO Tom Siebel, we appreciate your being here on the move and should point out that your company has been around more than a decade selling predictive the software for predictive analytics. And I think a lot of people are appreciative that you're part of this free effort to help us with COVID-19. All the best with, to you. Thank you. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.